you know, you've had TV shows, you've had movies, you've had TV movies. Um, which which of those would you say was your favorite um, to work in? And and how did you find, you know, the, the general like outlay of uh, working in those mediums? I mean, be, being an actor was a wonderful life for, for, for me at that age. You know, being in my mid 20s, early to mid 20s, sort of ducking about London's West End, going for auditions, hanging out with other actors, knocking around a Groucho club till late at night. It was great. It was a wonderful way to live. Um, but it's precarious. It's hard. It's like, I, I, I actually liken it to being a professional footballer. It's the same thing. You know, when you talk about being an actor, or you talk about being a professional footballer, mm-hmm. you, you immediately think it's a wonderful life because in your head you go, well, Jordan Henderson has a lovely life or Peter Crouch had a wonderful time. Whereas that isn't the true story of being a footballer. And it's similar to being an actor. You know, Tom Hardy has a great time. Dan Kaluuya has a great time. But for most actors who are ducking and diving and nicking an episode on Holby City here and an episode of The Build Air and whatever else, it's it's a hard grind. Like imagine being a professional footballer and you've got, you get a two-year contract at Torquay. So you and your family all go down to Torquay. You get your three kids into school at Torquay. You do two years. Six months before the end, they go, yeah, we're not renewing. So then you go to your missus and go, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is I've got a new club. The bad news is we've all, we're all moving to St. Mirren. <laughs> yeah. And do you know what I mean? You've all got to yeah. go. And in two uh-huh. years from there, they're knocking you on the head and you've got to move to Halifax. And it's a hard life. It's a hard life. And you're doing all that. And you're really slogging and you know that by the time you get to 35, it's probably over. You're probably nicking a grand a week at the, at the best. It's tough. And I think acting's like that. For the, for, the, for the famous ones, for the ones that you can reel off or whatever, it's great. But it's also quite difficult. And when you're 22, all those concerns don't matter because I didn't have a mortgage. I didn't want a mortgage. I didn't have a wife. I didn't have a, a kid. So it didn't matter. It was brilliant. You're always going to be all right at 22. Mm-hmm. So, so living that kind of actor's life then was brilliant. But I became aware when I was about 28, 29, that if I wanted, which I always did, a little bit of stability, do I want to be a dad? Yes, I do. Do I want to get married? Yes, I do. Unless you're, unless you're George Clooney, very difficult to do that as an actor because you have absolutely no idea where you're working. You have absolutely no idea if you're ever going to work again. You have absolutely no idea if you're going to ever earn any money again. But the same, on the other side of that coin, the phone could ring tomorrow. You go for an audition and all of a sudden you're, you're headlining, you're, you're the main actor in the new season of Top Boy. You're a millionaire like that. So it's changed everything. But it's the, it's the lottery of acting that didn't really suit me. But I look back on it so fondly. Mm-hmm. So, so out of out of all the roles that you you played in your time acting, um, which, which would you would you class as your favourite? Like which I which which, which show? Or, you know, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to think. I I loved them all. I genuinely did love them all. I think um, like a job that was very good for me was Doctor Who. Like I met some incredible people in Doctor Who. Like the the lady in the so I was in an episode called the Idiot's Lantern which was a Mark Gattis episode, brilliantly written, um, loved being in it. And the lady who played my mum was is, is married to a playwright, the guy that wrote Closer, you know, the film with Julia Roberts and whatever, just play. Mm-hmm. he wrote that. And he and I became quite good friends. I played for his football team and through him, it, 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 that was the most kind of life-changing job I've ever had, I think. But I loved them all, like... The, the, the difficulty being an actor isn't working. You know, most jobs, it's going to work. That's the problem. Time off is great. Being an actor, it's the complete opposite. Like I, I loved working as an actor. The problem is that you might not work. And how do you deal with your downtime? And how do you earn money when you're not earning money as an actor? But the acting itself was, was great. But if I had to say one job, yeah, it would probably, it would probably be that. Or... Or I did some adverts for the post office, which don't get me wrong, they're not, nobody's, you know, I didn't win a BAFTA for them, but they were so well paid. So maybe they mm-hmm. were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's it. Well, I remember, I remember um, watching the episode of uh, Doctor Who that you were in and uh, okay. after looking into your back catalogue and then going, oh, bloody hell, there yeah, you go. Yeah. That's who it is. Yeah. But then um, I also know that you've, um, 
done a music video as well for oh, uh, Chemical, Chemical Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. yeah. How, how did you go about landing that? What, 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 how I think that, that was around about? about the same time. That was around about the same time as EastEnders, you know, um, because it was touch and go whether I was going to have the time to do it. But I really wanted to, obviously, because um, Chemical Brothers are iconic, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. And we managed, me, my agent, and the production team of EastEnders managed to just get me. I think it was all done in a day. So I just needed that one day off. And uh, it was a, a pair of brothers who were the directors. It was really good to do. Um, and I think that might be the most successful thing I've ever done. You know, in terms of like that one, I think it won an MTV Music Award or whatever. Like it was, it was a, it was a good video. Not yeah. because I was, it was, a, it was a good video because of the concept and I happened to be in it. Um, but no, that was, that was great. And uh, I've had some, I, I remember once I was in the Camden Palace, which is a nightclub around my way. And they played it like they played the song, but they put the video up. That that was a trippy experience. All the everybody in there was just like, "Hang on a minute, what, 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 yeah, what's going scary. on here?" Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, no, uh, so yeah, that was quite. That was quite. And do you know? Do you know what? That's one. You know, you know when I think about like all the work I did, like some of it, some of it, I'm I'm very proud of because I thought it was very good. Certain that certain smaller films. I was in a film called Shifty, and I'm quite proud of that because of the product and it was made for a hundred grand and everybody really did pull their weight to, to make that film. And it has a great cast, Riz Ahmed and whoever else. And I have a tiny part in that, but I was very proud of that. I was at the national theater. I was at the Soho theater. I did a lot of theater work that I was also very proud of. Um, and it's, it's quite funny because the thing that, you know, I'd love somebody to go, Oh my God, did you, are you the boy from that pin to play or are you the boy for, and basically everyone goes, are you, are you that boy that was having an acid trip on a, on a Chemical <laughs> Brothers video? Right. Talking to fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Were you having, a, you having a chat with with, yeah. with um, Nemo? Yeah, that was me. That was me. Um, so, yeah, I'd say that is the thing that... That is the thing that, is most, that I am most recognised for. They don't recognise me at the time, but you know when people find out? Mm-hmm. Pe- when people find out, their mind is blown. That was definitely a situation for me as well. When it, yeah. again looking through it, when I went, oh no way! That, yeah, oh, yeah. that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's definitely no, the it's, one. Yeah, definitely. So, is there is there any interest for you to do any sort of acting roles in the future, or are you more set on the career path that you're on now? Or would you take anything up if you were offered it? No, I would take it. I loved it. I loved acting. It's a wonderful life. It's a great like you're telling stories, man. It's a it's a great way to live. But do, do you know what I? <laughs> I didn't, the reason I stopped acting is because I was struggling for work at one point in it in particular. I could have persevered or whatever, but I jumped ship because I, that's, that's a good, I jumped ship, eh, man overboard. Um, hey. but, but no, I, uh, I jumped ship because I was worried about work and, and whatever. So there was a time when I was kind of dedicating my life to being an actor. I didn't get enough work. So the fact that I'm now not dedicating my life to it and I'm fully focused on other things, it would be fairly arrogant to think that I could waltz back in and get a job. But stranger things have happened. If I got an opportunity to be an actor again, of course, I would I would bite your hand off. But I'm obviously not holding my breath for that to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you're out of that career path yeah. now. And but but again, you know, stranger things have happened, exactly. like you say. Exactly. And if it was stranger things, you know, ah, yeah, there we go. Take yeah, you're off. a billionaire yeah. immediately. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, one question I had on that front, actually, and this is this is a, probably a very difficult one. So as an actor, is there any any like films or TV shows that you've watched that you think are like the pinnacle of, of TV or any actors in particular that you think are the pinnacle of acting? Yeah, I mean, I'd say I think Gary Oldman, like the actors I always used to hold in high esteem when I was an actor because I would try and be like them. And mm. now actors who I just appreciate because I have no sort of vested interest. Gary Oldman, Jack Nicholson will always be my sort of favourite two actors. I think Gary Oldman is about as gifted as you can be, and in terms of in terms of exports from this country to the states, I'm trying to think, but I can't really think of anybody that's that's been a, a more successful export from the UK. Um, Gareth Bale, he won a lot of Champions Leagues, but a different conversation. <laughs> um, so, so Gary Oldman up there. I mean, Jack Nicholson. When I was a kid, I used to just love, love the lunacy of Jack Nicholson. One flew over the cuckoo's nest and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would certainly, certainly be it. But I don't know if there's a recency bias here in what I'm saying. But I think Top Boy is just amazing. I like genuinely do. I think it's so good, and I take a lot of pride in it because I'm a proud Londoner, mm. and 
it's clever in as much as it tackles uh, issues about London that that need tackling. So, for example, it's all set in Hackney, which is northeast London, and it somehow manages to tackle the gentrification problem of the city, which there is a huge one, by the way. Like, you would think that a show around sort of the gangster culture of London would ignore that, but it doesn't. It's brave to to kind of take that on. I think certain performances in it, um, I don't know a name, annoyingly, because uh, I had no idea that we would go in this direction. I love doing podcasts like this because they just <laughs> take a completely different turn. But um, <laughs> if, and to anyone who's seen it, there's a character called Jax. I just think she's, like, dazzlingly good. But I can see a spin-off. Like I reckon, I reckon if this happens, by the way, you have to put this clip out. <laughs> there will be a spin-off. There will be a top girl. Based on her. Yeah, there uh-huh. will be a top girl. I'm convinced. I just mm-hmm. think, look, everybody in it's brilliant. You know, I think Asha D's brilliant. I think Kano's brilliant. But that girl, you know, you know, it's very difficult, isn't it? When you're in scenes with with wonderful actors, but you just steal, steal the scene. Yeah. She seems to do that in virtually everything she's in. I think she's amazing. Yeah, um, I do think that's the sign of a, of a pretty amazing actor. If, if your eyes are always on her when she's on screen, then she's, yeah. she's definitely winning. Yeah, like Paulie ways. Walnuts in The Sopranos, isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, like you'll always you'll always be drawn to him, like little one liners from him, whatever. So, um, so, so yeah, I don't. That's that's the thing that I've seen most recently, anyway. That that really captivated me. Like, like generally I'm quite hard to please as well. You know, like everybody will tell me how good Peaky Blinders is. And I thought it was good. I thought it was all right. I enjoyed it, but that was kind of the end of my conversation on it. It was good. Um, I'm loving Ozark at the moment, but I'm not enough of the way through. But in terms of, in terms of like capturing me, I, th- I just thought Top Boy was amazing because something as difficult as that, it could be, it could be done so badly and yet it preserves an element of reality and and realness and and uh, redeeming qualities to some of the most violent characters it, it, I've ever seen on telly. You know, like, yeah. like how can you feel sympathy towards somebody like like Kano's character? And yet you do. So it's no, it's a, it's a very it's a very impressive show and represents London brilliantly. I think. Yeah, Top Boy did a great job of representing a, a different side to London, but also showing that people that may be a part of certain uh, walks of life uh, in terms of like the gang side of London actually have a personal life and there's many reasons behind them going down that path, etc. Thank you for watching. That was a clip from the Man Overball podcast. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to click on the links down below because we're on every streaming service and that's where you can find full episodes. Peace.